So in the previous video, we determined that our solution to the Schrodinger equation is i of y. And we think that it should be equal to something like this. So it's equal to some function h of y times this e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So in order to find our solution xi of y, it seems like we need to find what h of y should be. And then we can de uh, deduce what h of y should be by substituting this expression back into the Schrodinger equation. So recall the Schrodinger equation looks something like this at this point. And hopefully if we substitute this expression back into this differential equation, we will get another equation that will help us deduce what h of y should be. So in order to substitute this back into this differential equation over here, we need to first determine what d squared i dy squared should be. So now let's focus on this term. So d xi dy, this is equal to, so we can use the product rule, h prime of y e to the power of negative y squared over 2 plus h of y, and then we differentiate this term, so which becomes something like this. And this is due to the chain rule. So we can rearrange this slightly by grouping up some of the terms. So we can pull this e term out, out of the bracket. So now we're going to find a d squared xi dy squared. So that's just equal to differentiating this term one more time. So d squared xi dy squared, this is equal to taking the y derivative of this expression that we just obtained. So that's h prime of y minus y h of y times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So now we're going to use the product rule again. So we're going to differentiate this term and then retain this term. So h double prime of y. And then we can use the product rule again for this term, which just becomes h of y. So differentiate this and then retain this. And then h of y, h prime of y. And then you multiply this by the e term. And then now you retain this term over here. So h prime of y minus y h of y, and then you differentiate this term, which becomes e to the power of negative y squared over 2 times a negative y. So I can actually just put this negative y inside of the bracket over here, so it just becomes y squared. So I can just take this away. So now we can uh, combine these brackets over here. So we have a y double prime of y, so that goes away, and then we have two of these terms, two of these negative y h prime of y's. And then we also have positive y squared minus 1 h of y times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So this is just combining these two terms together. <clears throat> so this is what d squared i dy squared should be. And now we're ready to substitute this expression back into this differential equation so that we can obtain an expression that would allow us to deduce what h of y should be. So let's set out to do that. So we call that the Schrodinger equation is equal to something like this. So y squared minus k times xi. So just now we found that d squared xi dy squared is equal to this long expression over here. So we can just copy this out and then plus y squared minus 1 h of y times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So this is the left hand side. So the right hand side we have y squared minus k times xi. And then recall that xi, we are now assuming that it, it is taking such a form, so we can just substitute this back in. So h of y e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So now I'm going to rearrange everything to the left to the left hand side. So dumping everything all the way to the left hand side, you can see that these terms they don't really get affected. Uh, you have a y squared h of y e to the power of negative y squared over 2, and you see that these actually just cancel out. And the k it just goes on to the other side, and then it becomes k minus 1 h of y e to the power of negative y squared over 2 equal to 0. Now in order for this expression here to be true, and we know that this always has to be true because the Schrodinger equation is always true, and if we would require that this expression to be always true for all, uh, for all values of y, you see that there is only one possibility. That is, that this inner expression here must be equal to 0. So you know that for whatever values of y, this is always going to be positive. This is never going to be equal to 0. But if you want this whole expression to be equal to 0, then this expression here 
must be equal to zero. So now we have this new differential equation. Now we know that the second derivative of h of y minus 2y times the first derivative of h of y plus k minus 1 h of y is equal to 0. Now this is what we are trying to find. Now we have an alternative differential equation. And assuming that we can solve this, if we do solve this, we will arrive at an expression for h of y, which we could then substitute back into this expression here to obtain our final solution, xi of y.